Okay, so stakeholders uh, spent hours during the legislative se session in a room with the Education Chairman, the State Board of Ed, the State Department of Ed, Idaho Digital Learning Academy, the Public Charter Commission, uh, IEA, which is the Teachers Association, the IASA, which is the administrators, and our other lawmakers to figure out how to make the change to the school funding formula. After a few weeks, they were very close and came nearly to a consensus on how to make this change as least disruptive as possible to all the districts and charter schools in the state. However, certain members of the legislature felt that the stakeholders were nitpicking the bill apart and eventually went above all of the education um, stakeholders to move forward with a bill with minimal issues that we were attempting to address collectively. Um, and ultimately, nearly everyone testified against the Senate Bill 1196, and the committee never did take a full vote on a switch to the funding formula. But they weren't ready to give up yet. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, um, currently, uh, all the schools in, in the state, uh, not just districts, but all schools are have to put in data on their children into a database that goes to the state uh, Department of Ed, and um, it's supposed to help us uh, help the state track how to give allocations. And so, part of the problem is that as school districts and schools, we can't always get all that data from parents. And <laughs> and as small, very small schools. Um, our data can't get desegregated because we don't have high populations. We have to have over 10 students in, in a category to be able to see that demographic. Um, so, so for instance, in Gen C, if I have one Native American student in my class, in a class of 30 kids or whatever, that one is not 10. So that student, that doesn't show up as a demographic. So we're not getting accurate data based on what we have to input unless we give our administrators, which for school boards, we need the data to make decisions and make recommendations for our schools. So our, our superintendent has to hand do all that data. They have to go back into the database or all the, the ways that they put it in in the first place, pull it all back out to give us a report that shows us what we actually have and what we need. Even though it's supposed to be this database that we put everything into, we can just draw it out when we need to, or the State Department can draw it out as they need to. So we are getting accurate data. And one of the main things that, like for Title I students, for funding for special needs students, um, they go off of our free and reduced lunch rates. Well, not all of our families turn that data in. We give that piece of paper and we recommend that everybody fill it out whether or not you think you need to have free and reduced lunch or not. Um, because it gives us a, a base. Even if you choose not to take the free and reduced lunch, if you qualify, it gives us a number. But we can't, we don't require it. It's not, you know, we can't get the data. And so we, we, we aren't capture, you know, capturing all the populations that we need to get the funding that we need from this formula that they were trying to create to plug us into this spreadsheet that was supposed to give us all these extras. And so we need to get good data to the state so that when they do make a good funding formula for us, it's accurate and it gives us what we need. So, so this last piece of legislation that came up at the end was called kind of a definitions bill. And it's in law now. But its goal is is pretty good to try to to try to um, encapsulate all of the demographics that we need to get so that we can do this model differently and accurately. So um, it defines what what uh, an uh, ELL, ELL student is. It defines what a special needs student is. It defines what an at risk student is and. And that's very important because we can't just do that um, subjectively. It has to be the same throughout the state so we can be equitable. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. 
So it also gave the state that this, this definitions bill also gives the State Board of Education rulemaking authority to, to define enrollment, which is currently underway and much more difficult than one might imagine. So this is our, our example. Picture 115 school districts and over 70 charter schools where almost no two schools or districts have the same exact class schedule. Since it would be nearly impossible to crosswalk it by course, the districts and the schools will literally have to track how many minutes per day they are in each school or district. All of these enrollment-based students, we would have to, if we go to enrollment-based, we're going to have to have a way to track where that, school, where that kid is enrolled. Okay. Um, so that's where the funding formula is at this point. So, are there, are there questions about the funding formula itself? Because <laughs> it's, it's really, there isn't one. However, at our, <laughs> at, at our region <laughs> meeting, there's just a definitions bill. So at our region meeting um, for region two, that includes like uh, Potlatch, Genesee, uh, Grangeville, all these school districts in Moscow in the area, um, we always invite our legislators and um, Representative Gosling did come and uh, he did mention that he has a bill coming forward for the funding formula. Uh, none of us know about it. Um, we have, I don't know who all is involved with that as far as uh, legislators, um, but that will be interesting to see. And, and we've heard some um, at other region meetings throughout the state that uh, there may be other uh, you know, representatives or senators. I don't know who all is doing them, but legislators bringing forward different ideas for new funding formulas. So it'll be an interesting session. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what they ask from us. Um, one thing that we are proposing, um, we did have a, um, a school district. So uh, I think I don't, I don't. In the, in the resolution process for the Idaho School Boards Association, um, any board can put together a resolution that they would like to see passed. And one that's coming from the Boise District um, addresses what we would like to see from a funding formula if it comes. And so our members will be voting on, on this. Uh, and on this resolution, so this is not, you know, this hasn't been adopted, but what they're asking is that, um, that, that the Idaho School Boards Association shall work with the Idaho legislator to adopt a funding formula that is based upon the following principles. Predictability, it should have the ability to accurately predict budgets in coming years. Adequacy, it should provide sufficient funding for districts and charter schools to provide essentials to students. Transparency, the process should be clear. Stability, there should be no cliffs from year to year. Equitability, it should differentiate between learning um, LEAs, uh, schools, districts, in a way that recognizes their unique needs, that it honors the experience of staff, that it honors the education of staff, and that it holds harmless. Um, no education associations should lose funding. So for example, the cost per pupil is not lower than the current funding model, and the new model should take into account growing enrollment. So that's something that um, the Boise District put together for consideration by our membership. Um, so that's one thing that's coming in. Um, so will that be voted on at your November meeting? Then? It will be. Mm -hmm. We have 15 resolutions coming forward, and that's one that will be brought to the floor and voted on. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, you know, it, it's hard to gauge really how those, how anything goes. Um, at our executive board meeting, where we look at all of these, um, so we have a at our executive board meeting that consists of a vice chair and a chair from each region in the state and the four officers, and so um, we go over all these resolutions and we try to take into consideration every district, every, every region, um, look at legislatively how it might help or hinder us, and then make a recommendation about whether we think it should vote with a pass, a no pass, or a no recommendation. And we present our side 
after, you know, so we kind of looked through all these, made a, an initial decision, and I honestly thought all 15 were like pretty easy. I was like, oh yeah, no problem. That <laughs> meeting was like, what? We're, we're doing what? We have a motion on that? Oh my gosh! I mean, I just couldn't believe how long it was taking everybody to get through the process of the resolutions. And then at our region meeting, everybody was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, no problem. No, no question. I mean, it was just like I had thought it could it would go. So obviously, I'm tied to my region <laughs> in my little in my train of thought, and uh, and and it's, that's why it's a good thing to have all of the regions represented because you have no idea uh, sometimes what's happening at a little place down in Cache County or uh, <laughs> or a big place like Pocatello, you know, things like that. So it's interesting. Um, so that's I, that's really what I have on the funding formula. I, I did bring, you know, that week that we had to look at the funding formula proposed, um, those stakeholders came up with a white paper that they gave um, to the legislature that had addressed each issue um, and made recommendations. So they had, um, they kind of broke it down, they had a goal, a problem statement, and a proposed solution for each area of concern that they had, which was really helpful. Um, I really, I don't, it, it's kind of, it's a good reference, but it's not anything that we probably need to go over item by item. Um, so that was the funding formula. And then um, some of the other things that we, uh, Quinn and I talked about that would be helpful for voters to consider um, looking at throughout the year or keeping an eye on, um, is the governor's task force uh, recommendations. Uh, I am part of the main committee, and each person on the main committee is assigned to a subcommittee. So I am on the rural and underserved subcommittee. Um, those recommendations from our subcommittees have all been submitted. Um, we have some, um, we have uh, four or five recommended um, recommended recommendations, actually. So uh, the main committee co-chairs put together kind of a summation of our top priorities. They narrowed those down to five areas, and we are all in consideration of those um, during this month, and we'll reconvene on the 4th of November in Boise um, to make those final recommendations. Um, we'll vote on those uh, in whatever form they end up being and uh, submit those to the governor. And those um, hopefully will help support or drive legislation as well this year. And um, I think there'll be significant changes, um, hopefully in legislators' minds about uh, what our priorities are because really they're, um, and, and I'm coming off of just getting, I, I drove to Boise for a conference yesterday and back last night, so, um, I went to a safety symposium, school safety symposium, and um, it's pretty unanimous among all of the experts in the field about what we need to do for school safety and climate, and uh, it's preventative measures, and they all address our kids' social emotional health using more um, trauma-informed care responses, um, practices, and getting our teachers' skill levels in those things up uh, to where it's uh, easier to manage our schools and our uh, and to better serve our children.